Hello everyone, it is Mr. Stubstep, and today I'm going to be going over all the Sun and Moon sets, and I'm going to rank them by their collectability. So here's the criteria I'm going to be going over. So I'm going to be looking at the top cards in each of the sets, and then their respective value. I'll be trying to show the fairly recent PSA 10 prices, if applicable. These are going to be based off of my prices that I got in my value discussions. So, you know, some of them might be like a month or two old, and then some of them actually might be fairly recently. I know I've pretty much done all of these value discussions like end of, set, end of December through like the end of February. So those are where the prices are mainly going to range. So you could pretty much say plus or minus 50 or plus or minus like $50 for each of these cards potentially. And I'm also going to be looking at the number of valuable cards in the set. So is there only one card that's valuable in the set and then the rest are trash? Just wanted to make sure that these sets aren't top heavy. I'm also going to be looking at potential for the future. So when I'm saying collectability, I mean like collecting and holding for the long one, 10, 20, you know, 10, 20 years way down the line. Like, I'm not talking about flipping. Could a lot of this stuff correlate directly to, you know, you know, sets and cards that would be good at flipping? Yes. But I'm just talking about like way in the long run. And then, so sealed products should generally follow suit, but it won't be a point of emphasis. So, you know, some sets were less printed than others, or they're just harder to find, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of times a sealed product will follow, you know, sets that have a lot of valuable singles within the set. Because, I mean, if there's no valuable cards within the set, then, you know, the sealed product won't be that valuable. Unless, of course, it's old or out of print or, you know, just rare to find. And then I'm not going to have any special emphasis on playability for specific cards. You know, a lot of these cards are out of rotation. You know, they can still be in expanded or whatever. But, yeah, I'm not going to be... It's going to be mainly like on looks, collectability, and all of that. And then also, just to top it all off, this is going to be my opinion. And then I'll also be, if there's any special factor within the set, I'll make sure to provide my justification for that. So I'm going to be ranking all 16 sets. And I want you guys to either make some predictions. I, I realize organizing all of these sets in a row would be a lot of work. So maybe you can guess what the top three are going to be or what the worst one's going to be. And yeah, we can go through this together. I, I thought this video would be appropriate because I finished all of my value discussions for all the sun and moon sets. And I'm like, you know what? It would be a quick way to kind of like summarize everything. And I think this video is the best way to do it just by ranking every sun and moon set. So let's get into it. So starting off, I'm sure you guys could have guessed this, Crimson Invasion. You have the top four cards here. And when the top, when two of the top four cards are the same card, just in different, like different variants, you know, the set isn't too hot does have some secret rare energies or sorry just one secret rare energy the water energy which isn't the most popular secret rare it has a couple full arts with olivia lucimine and then i mean i guess you could say gladion too but they're just not the most popular i mean olivia is a snack but i mean besides that like a lot of these cards just not a lot of good cards in the set unfortunately and it's sad because that gyarados card is so beautiful all right next we have dragon majesty so I know you guys might be thinking, how in the world is Dragon Majesty this low on the list? Well, hear me out, okay? Best card in the set is the Golden Ultra Necrozma GX. Whose favorite Pokemon is Ultra Necrozma? Like, even Necrozma in general. Like, I do not know anybody that, oh yeah, Ultra Necrozma, like he's my boy, or, you know, me and him go way back. It's still just way too fresh. And Dragon Majesty, like, Salamence card, really cool. Reshiram card, you know, if you're a, gen, if you're a big Gen 5 junkie, awesome. And then the fact that a regular hollow Charizard is in the top four, it just, I don't know, this set, I wasn't around to collect when this set first came out. Obviously, the product is really hard to get hold of, and, you know, the sealed product goes for a lot, but I just think overall, like, this set, it has the Zinnia full art. It's kind of cool. I mean, the Salamence is probably, like, one of my favorite cards in this set. And then you do have some Dragonites, but, I mean, there was even a Dragonite Rainbow Rare in the set because it was a promo, so it's like, I mean, you got Kingdra, it... Let me, let, let me just say, uh, the further we go along, I think you'll understand why Dragon Majesty is so low. But it is sad because it is a special set and it has potential. But, I mean, none of these cards sold for more than $200, at least. Uh, like, the last prices that I looked up, up to January of this year. Next, we have Guardians Rising. So, Guardians Rising was one of the sets that I was, when I was making lists, I was kind of fighting for. Because, I don't know, I just always had a special thing for Guardians Rising. Um, you have, of course, you have an Evolution and Sylveon, which isn't bad. You have the Grass Secret Rare Energy, which is the only Secret Rare Energy I've ever pulled, so it's very pretty. You have Metagross, which is another very popular Pokemon. You know, you get the Beldum at the very end of the Gen 3 games, or maybe that's only, like, Emerald or Ruby or Sapphire. I sometimes get them mixed up, but 
you know, good looking cards. And then you have Mallow in a full art, which, you know, Mallow's pretty cute. Her trial was, was pretty fun and everything. I mean, you have, you know, the other, you have a lightning and fighting secret rare energy, and then also the double colorless. So those are kind of cool, potentially collectible. But I feel like there's other sets that we're going to go to down the line that have cooler secret rare energies. You have some starters, or you have a starter in Cinnaroar. Um, Sunroom Base has the other two, but yeah, just kind of lacking, unfortunate. I wish it could be higher. Sylveon is really the thing that boosts this things up to rank 14. Next, we have Sun and Moon Bay set. So another set that I kind of wanted to do well, but I think a lot of people recognize, you know, it has the Eeveelutions and Umbreon and Espeon. It has one of the three Lilies, and this is actually, you know, the least expensive Lily, and I mean, it's with good reason. This Lily is just not that good of an artwork compared to the other two. And then you actually have the Ultra Ball Secret Rare too, which is just... This card was very playable. It'd be awesome if, you know, it was in standard format again. But, yeah, these are some solid cards, and they are the, the cards that the Hidden Fate Shinies are based off of. So, great cards. We have Detective Pikachu and number 12. So, I know a lot of people are, like, pulling your hair out. And, like, how in the world can Detective Pikachu even be on this list, let alone above other sets? I want... Honestly, take a second and look at some prices. I did my uh, value discussion on Detective Pikachu, and nearly every single card in that set in a 10 is like over 50 bucks, some over 100. And the thing is, the set is not that big. You pull common cards, you pull a rare, potentially a hollow rare, you're making a decent amount of money. Like, And the thing is, I'm talking collectability in the long run, and Detective Pikachu, you know, those kids that watch the movie or, you know, people that are feeling nostalgic, like Detective Pikachu is... Like, it's one of the things that we laugh at now and then way down the line, everyone's like, dang, like, I used to have that full set. Or I, I, And the thing is, based on these sales, it looks like people are trying to collect full PSA 10 sets of this. And I mean, you could argue some of these cards are pretty ugly. Like, that Charizard card, fairly ugly. The Ditto card, really cool. And, you know, if you had a special Pokemon within the movie that you really liked and you want their card, and there's also promos and all that stuff. I don't, I'm not including promos in any of these discussions. I'm just saying, you know, the whole like, collective of Detective pikachu S cards. I could see why people would want, you know, to collect something like this. So let me know what you think, if this should be higher, or lower, or not even on the list, but I included it because it, you know, was a set. Forbidden Light, number 11. So, essentially, this is the Greninja and Lucario set. I know it's sad. I think you guys might be seeing the uh, little portfolio, like, little mini binders showing up and all that stuff. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, Greninja and Lucario, both very popular Pokemon, especially in Japan. They're good-looking cards. I mean, you have Xerneas and Yveltal, you have Dialga in this set as well. You have another Ultra Necrozma in this set, as well as Zygarde and Palkia. So, I mean, there's some cool cards in this set, but just no, like, heavy, heavy hitters, you know? I mean, Greninja, you could argue, is a heavy hitter, but I don't know. It's, you know, Gen 6 started. I mean, it's, it's, it's a cool Pokemon, not one of my favorite. Lucario, I would argue, is a little bit cooler, but... Yeah, just the Lucario and Greninja set, Forbidden Light. Number 10, Celestial Storm. So this is, you have Rayquaza in this set. You have a Lysia, or Lysia, or Ly I think it's Lysia, which is a beautiful full art. And then you have Rainbow Energy Secret Rare. That is just, that is just one of the most beautiful cards I've ever seen. Like, I, I wish I had this card. It, you know, gives me those, I mean, they've reprinted Rainbow Energy a, a handful of times, but it just gives me those Team Rocket vibes. And then, Rayquaza is just Rayquaza, you know, one of the coolest legendary Pokemon, in my opinion. I mean, green's my favorite color, and it's a dragon, and it's, you know, it keeps Groudon and Kyogre, like, put. So, I don't know, a decent set, but a little bit on the on the top-heavy side. Um, sorry, I'm just checking. Yeah, there's, I mean, you have Scizor and Articuno, Blaziken. Like, you have some other decent cards within this set. Tate and Liza, Steven's Resolve. I mean, you have... All right, cards, but the thing is, when we get later in this list, like, you understand why these card, why these sets are down so low. So number nine, this is actually where the sets just start getting good. Like, I feel so bad putting Ultra Prism at nine because it is such a fantastic set. I want to tell you here right now, nine and above, like, you're a golden collecting that set. Like, there's just so much potential. So starting off, you have the Lily, which this is the most expensive Lily, and it's a Lily that I actually have. And it's my favorite Lily, and I don't even like Lily. I did not like her as a character in the Sun and Moon games. Maybe in the anime, you know, she's a little bit more, like, you can tolerate her a little bit better. But, yeah, she just kind of gave me, you know, that Ashley from Resident Evil 4 vibes. I don't know if you guys have even played that game. But 
you have Lily, beautiful card. Cynthia, another beautiful card. Like, Cynthia, how could you not, you know, have a thing for her? She's super hardcore. Beat me down so many times in the Elite Four. And you just you just keep coming back for more. And that Garchomp just puts you in, puts you in your place. And then you have two gold cards. Like, really cool gold cards. These came before, you know, uh, not Forbidden Light. Uh, was it Forbidden Light? Sorry, I'm getting all these things mixed. Oh, it came before Dragon Majesty's gold cards. So these are really cool gold cards. Um, I do think the Sword and Shield gold cards are, like, some of the best gold cards. But, I mean, Sogalea, Lunala, the Gen 6, Box Legendaries. Like, this is this is just a really nice set. Um, so much potential. You have Lusamine. You have Gardenia Full Arts. You have... Leafeon and Glaceon, which normally the Evolutions would be the front runners, but when you have all this other, when you have this heat coming up, I mean, it's kind of hard to beat. But yeah, overall, it's 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 a great set, and it's number nine. Number eight, Burning Shadows. So Burning Shadows is one that I did not want high up, but I'm sorry, when you have the number one chase card in your set selling for over 3,000, like, you have to respect it. And I know a lot of people, they're like, oh, well, isn't this a top-heavy set, yada, yada, yada. Well, there's actually some... Other cards within this set, too. Um, you have some good... You have, like, the better Secret Rare Energies, like the Fire, the Fairy, and the Darkness that's featured on this little slide. Um, and then you have the regular Charizard GX, which frustrates me because it sells for so much, but it does. And then Gardevoir, you know, it's the evolution of my favorite Pokemon. It's a good-looking Pokemon. You have Darkrai, you have Machamp, you have an Acerola Full Art, which... And you have the Wick Full Art, Thick Wick, can't deny her. And then Guzma, you know, before... You know, people stopped using him, but yeah, I mean, it's, I think a lot of people, when they think the set, they think it's only Charizard, and don't get me wrong, like, Charizard beats out all these cards, but there, there's some other cards in here, there's some other heat. Number seven, Lost Thunder. So, once again, all of these sets are so amazing, so it felt so weird, like, you know, putting them down this low, but the other sets are just so good. You have basically the Gen 2 Charizard, honestly, a lot of people might be leaning towards, you know, the Lugia vibes. I mean, when you have the Rainbow Rare and the Full Art selling for that much, like, that's crazy. Like, people people really like Lugia, I guess. I mean, there's there's definitely some heat in this set. set. Tyranitar GX, one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. You have a Rainbow Rare in it. You have Suicune GX. You have Mimikyu GX Secret Rares. You have a Whitney Full Art. I mean, who doesn't like Whitney? You know, another trainer that kind of beats you down in Generation 2. You have Zara Aura, you have Alolan Ninetales, another beautiful card. And I already mentioned Suicune, but yeah, it's it, it's a solid set. It's a solid set. I mean, when you have Lugia, like, you're, you're going to do all right. You're going to do all right. Number six, Team Up. So I know, like, super highly collectible set. This is when those uh, Tag Team GXs first started, you know, entering the sets. I mean, you have the Latios and Latios GX. I... I I describe these cards as the, the twice-baked Jake effect, like, because it's a beautiful card. Obviously, he's a huge fan of this card, and you can't, you know, blame a price increasing on one person, but he definitely didn't do anything to, like, put the price down. So, I just call it the twice-baked Jake effect because it's, like, an overarching, like, thing, but it, obviously, he, he's just doing his thing, and whatever happens, happens. But $900, almost 1000 like... Almost a thousand for this card. I'm sure maybe by now it's sold for over a thousand. You have Erica's Hospitality. Have a soft place for Erica because Generation One Grass Gym Leader. Grass is always the type that I choose, so she's always got a special place. You have Pikachu and Zekrom GX. Really cool artwork. You know Pikachu just straight up balling on top of Zekrom like that's pretty nice. And then you have the Gengar and Mimikyu GX. Not the coolest artwork ever, but Gengar is really popular, and Mimikyu is another very popular modern Pokemon. And of course, you have the alternate full arts of Magikarp and Whale Lord, as well as Gengar and Mimikyu. You have a Jasmine full art. You have Eevee and Snorlax in this set. You have, like, you have you know the other Latios and Latios cards. You have Celebi and Venusaur. You have the four like the Dana, Morgan, Evelyn, Nita, the people from like I don't. It's not like Battle Tower or Battle. I forget what it's called in those games, but yeah, just a lot of greatness within the set. Like Team Up, and it's really hard to find. Like Team Up, the only packs I've ever been able to find in the wild are dollar packs. <laughs> number five, Unbroken Bonds. Isn't that crazy that Unbroken Bonds is number five? Sorry, just, it's crazy. Of course, you have the Restaurant and Charizard. That's 
course, that's going to take the cake. Not as much as some of the other cards uh, on this on this list that we've gone over so far, which is interesting. I do personally like this Tag Team GX versus the one that appears in Cosmic Clips, but yeah. Green's Exploration, beautiful full art card, just beautiful. And then you also have the red to boot to, you know, kind of combine with that. Once again, another beautiful full art card. I forget the artist's name, but this artist that does all these, like, like these, this style of full art card is just, he's killing it. Like, all of his cards are just going crazy, and people love his art. And then you also have the Blastoise GX Rainbow Rare. Not my favorite Blastoise artwork, but it is a Rainbow Generation 1 starter, and you just cannot deny that. Like, it does really good. You have the Welder Full Art, you have Guardian, Guardian, Gardevoir and Sylveon, you have Greninja and Zorark in this set as well, you have Marshadow and the Champ, you have a Janine Full Art, you have, uh, yeah, I mean, those are all the big ones in the Cario Mel Metal. So, I mean, there's there's some good cards within this set. It's, uh, I mean, the Charizard helps it out a lot, but there's some good cards within this set. Number four, Shining Legends. Now, a lot of, you probably see the prices down here, and you're like, why in the world is Shining Legends up so high? Like, a lot of those other sets definitely beat this out. And you could, and it was this set was probably printed way more than all those other sets. But here's the thing: Shining Legends is one of those sets that I think has that special factor. Like you have the Mewtwo GX, the Test Two Mewtwo. I've actually pulled one of these, and Mysteries pulled one of these, so I do have two of these. So I'm a little bit biased, and I like this set a lot. But that itself is just such a unique card. And then you have the Shining cards: Shining Mew. I put Shining Jirachi. I mean, you could exchange Shining Jirachi for any of them. You know. Um, the Shining Rayquaza, the Shining Arceus, like, there's just so many, not so many, but there's a decent amount of Shining cards, and I just know in the future, like, the full set of Shinings from this set are gonna be, even, like, recently, they've been definitely a hot topic for, you know, people collecting and everything, because, you know, the original Shinings from, uh, Neo Rev and Neo Destiny, they're just, they're, they're starting to become, like, out of reach, if you don't have them already, and then you have the Mewtwo GX Rainbow Rare, which, Personally, I think this is probably one of the best Mewtwo artworks ever. And then that Shining Mew. Uh, the Latios and Latios GX alternate art is a beautiful card, but I personally think out of all the Sun and Moon cards, this Shining Mew is the most beautiful card out of all of them. It is just so perfect. The color, you have a Shiny Mew. It is it's just everything I can want in a card. And then it's the original style, you know, just the hollow, and then it's just a beautiful card. Let me know if you think this should be higher or lower, but I think this is a good spot for it. Number three, Unified Minds. So Unified Minds was really, honestly, a set I just did not know much about. I knew it had Mewtwo and Mew in there, and that was about it. Never opened, I think I have a few cards from this set, but I've never, like, opened up, you know, packs or a booster box or anything. And this set is so stacked. Like, if you haven't seen some of the value discussion videos, I highly recommend it for some of these videos, because there's just so much. Of course, you have the Mewtwo and Mew, you have Misty's Favor, which... Everyone likes Misty, like, come on, she's, I mean, even in that photo, she got hearts, and she's, you know, praying, or begging, or, you know, being thankful, however you look at it. You have the Slowpoke and Psyduck GX Rainbow Rare, like, I actually have that card, and it goes really well, because people like Psyduck and Slowpoke, you know, they're a cute, derpy Pokemon, and then I threw the Latios GX in there, but you have Blue's Tactics, you have the Dragonite Rainbow Rare, you have... Raichu and Alolan Raichu, which is very cute, some of the variants in that. You have Megal Mega Sableye and Tyranitar, as well as the alternate full art. Some of the alternate full arts in this set, I didn't really like that much, but yeah, you have the Cherish Ball, you have Aerodactyl GX, like, you have so much. Rowlet and Alolan Executor, like, this this set is stacked, like, really well in PSA 10s, really well. Cosmic Eclipse is number two. Obviously, you guys can probably figure out my process of elimination would be number one, and you probably guessed it from the beginning, but Cosmic Eclipse. Now, you might be looking at these prices and be like, oh, these are, you know, lower than some of the other sets that we went over, but Cosmic Eclipse, I said Unified Minds was stacked. No, no, no. Cosmic Eclipse is stacked, okay? Like, first off, you have the alternate art of the Arceus, Dialga, and Palkia, which actually beats out the Reshiram and Charizard. I haven't seen, like, super, super recent prices. This is as of, like, mid, mid-February, but... I mean, don't get me wrong, like, this card is used a lot within the game itself, so it's probably why it's still a little bit high, but then, I mean, just look at that artwork, like, it's, it's just a classic, it's historical, it's, and then you have Generation 4 coming up too, there's just, there's just so much going for this card, and then the Reshiram and Charizard, um, 
Oh my gosh, I just realized I made a mistake. That should be the Brakeson and Charizard. I apologize for that, but the price, yeah, the price is, is correct, at least from my, from the last PSA 10 sale of 9 February. And then you have the Lily's Full Force, which is the second best Lily artwork, but I think it's far from the, the Lily from Ultra Prism. And then you have Blastoise and Piplup GX. I think this artwork is a little bit awkward, but once again, it's a rainbow generation one and generation four starter. Can't really go wrong with that. And then you have red and blue full art. You have Rosa full art. I really wanted to put Rosa up here, but there's just so many other big hitters that slightly beat it out. You have Cynthia and Caitlin. You have all those secret rare character cards, which I'm actually in the process of trying to complete that set. I just need one more, which is very exciting. You have Mallow and Lana. You have Reshram and Zekrom. You have the other Charizard Embracing cards. You have Sogolay and Lunala GX. You have Professor Oak's setup. You have Venusaur and Snivy. Like, there's just so much in this set. And it is, you know, a super massive set. Like, the biggest in Sun and Moon. Like, there's just so much going on. So much potential. Those secret rare character cards are really fun. You know, a wild card to have. It's just an amazing set. Really, really. I apologize for that mistake. It was supposed to be Charizard and Brakeson. And, of course, number one, Hidden Fates. You have the Charizard GX, you have Umbreon GX, you have the Cynthia Full Art, which is amazing. And then, you know, the Sylveon GX, you can really put a lot of the other, you know, evolutions and stuff in there. But yeah, it is. This set is just a collector's dream. You have shiny Pokemon, you have the potential to pull stuff in the reverse slot. Like, there's just so much potential. There's just so much potential in this set, like, for a collector. For a collector, this is the perfect set. I envy anybody that was actually collecting when this set first came out, because I probably would have tried to go for a master set of this, but I didn't, you know, hop in until, ha hop back into collecting until, like, May of 2020, so I was able to find, like, some random stuff, like, collection boxes or tins from, like, Walmart and stuff, but, yeah, and the thing is, this set is still, like, this, this set has so much of it printed, and it still goes for so much. Who knows down the line once all the cards that are currently sit and come back, but, I mean, you have all the evolutions, well, except for, you know, the, the original three. Um, you have Scizor, GX, you have Greninja, the shiny. You have, of course, Charmander and Charmeleon, the baby shinies, you really rare. You have Darkrai, Gardevoir, Articuno, Lucario. Pretty much all the full art shinies do really, really well. Like, they all sell for at least over 100. And remember, this is these are PSA 10 prices, so fairly near-perfect cards. So don't go thinking, you know... The, the, you have these cards and they're worth this much. These are these are PSA 10 prices, you know, sold and everything on eBay. But yeah, Hidden Fates, no surprise at all that it was number one. So just overall takeaways from the Sun and Moon series of sets. So Shiny Vault, highly collectible. I mean, it's, it's obvious when Pokemon pushed for a Shiny Vault within Shiny Fates, I imagine that they're going to have more Shiny Vaults in the future. And it just makes sense. People love, you know, changing palettes of their favorite Pokemon. Like, it's... It's a no-brainer. The Shining cards, I think the Shining cards from Shining Legends are just going to do really well because they're like that kind of OG, shiny, you know, type of card. So I think a lot of people will like those. Tag Team GX cards. I know they also had, you know, the Prism Star cards or the Prism Rares, but the Tag Team GX cards, like some of those tag teams are just prime for collectors. I know some people that just only collect all the tag teams or get all the different variants or all them in tens. Like, they're just highly collectible. The alternate arts, you know, they introduced all those alternate artworks of different Pokemon and, you know, battle styles that's, you know, coming out or very soon. You know, the initial prints and all that stuff have already kind of entered the market, but you have a couple alternate arts in there, which are going to be very popular. And then the full art trainers, these took a while to kind of gain, gain momentum, but now that they have, like, it almost doesn't look like it'll ever go back to where it used to be because people realize these full art cards are beautiful. Like, the full art trainers are just beautiful. And then finally, at a minimum, you'll always have those legendaries and starters that are popular. So just look out for those. I have the top five cards here. Of course, the Rainbow Charizard GX, you know, takes the ultimate cake. But, I mean, you have some other really good cards here. If you have any of these five, which I only have Lily, which I think is the cheapest besides the Latios, and Latios are probably about the same. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy. Sun and Moon has so much potential. Like, even now, the booster boxes go for so much. So yeah, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Tomorrow I should have another Shining Fates opening. It should be a, a premium collection, so that'll be fun. I've, I've seen mixed reviews on the pull rate, so we'll see. And then on Wednesday, 
I will start my trick through X, the X and Y series of sets. So I just did Sun and Moon, and then did kind of a recap in this video. And then I'm going to go into XY base set. So it'll be a fun time. I'll learn a lot. Hopefully you guys will too. Because, you know, this was still in my gap where I wasn't collecting. So except Evolutions was the only one that I actually collected. But yeah, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. This is your second video of mine. Consider subscribing. If you like what you saw, leave a like. Um, if you don't like what you saw, you know, leave some feedback down below or, you know, dislike or whatever. But yeah, thank you guys so much for your time. I know it was a longer video and I know, you know, slideshows are usually for like school or class. But sometimes if the slideshow has a good subject, it can be entertaining. Thank you.